You are still watching Ways and we're discussing the ease of movement in Lagos. Now, Fola Tinubu is the MD CEO of Primero Transport Services, operators of the popular BRT buses in Lagos. And he has joined us via Zoom. And we have Olu Dayo Olu Jekun, the, the co founder and CEO of Staff Bus Integrated Technology, is here with us live in the studio. Now, Staff Bus is a subscription based bus ride service for daily commute for workers. Um, for workers, it was fun, founded to solve the chaotic transport problem in Lagos. Now, remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways to Africa One with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Fola Tinumbu and Mr. Oludayo. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So do we have Mr. Fola Tinumbu listening to us? Yes. Good evening, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So because you are virtual, we'll quickly start with you. Now, um, with, the, with the lockdown, we saw pictures or videos, rather, of the BRT buses with the new mo modal operandi. With, uh, we saw some X mark, marking of X's and all of that, spacing the buses and all of that. And we said, okay, this was fantastic. However, when they announced the lockdown on Monday, uh, the ease of the lockdown rather, we saw at the bus stations, it was really chaotic, you know, managing um, people that were going to come into those buses. So how have you been managing those um, scenarios that they are not experiencing, they are not um, doing any social distancing and all that? Well, it's tough. Go ahead. We can listen. We can hear you, sir. <laughs> yeah, you see, it's tough managing the at the bus stops because we can't control when people come, and so many people come there at the same time, and it's a, a limited space. So the uh, social distancing has been very very tough. We are working with Lagos State Government to see how we can make it work, but. At the bus stop, it's so challenging because remember when the bus stops were designed, we, nobody was thinking about social distancing. Absolutely. And during rush hour, like it could do, for example, now in the morning, almost about twenty thousand people show up for you know to ride, and you know in that limited space to do social distancing is very tough. So the solution is to make sure we pick them up fast and we get them out of here as quickly as possible. And luckily for us, we used um, part of the lockdown period to fix our buses. So we are, we are now able to put about 320 buses out. We're picking them as fast as possible. But because we can only put 20 in a bus, that is a challenge for us. But the key is we need to move them fast. Wow. Okay. So now we know that um, we have challenges having to put people on the bus um, based on the numbers we are required to have in BRT buses. So is there anything in place currently, like um, in the months to come, do you have anything put in place? What are the strategies you, you've put in place to ensure or improve that um, the community, the, uh, people commuting, com commuting to mm. back and forth to wherever they were, they are going to. Do you have anything in place to improve that currently in the months to come? We are working on it, and like I said, we are trying to put more buses out, and we are working with Lagos State Government to find a way to uh, still do some social distancing in uh, in the limited confined uh, bus stops, uh, but. We, on our part, what we need to do is to just to put as many buses out as possible and pick people as fast as possible and decongest the uh, bus shelters. So what is the biggest challenge that you have faced since um, this um, lockdown, the ease and all of that? What is the biggest challenge? So if, if the government is listening, so they know where to channel that energy for you to make it easier. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest challenge we faced is actually um managing like you rightly said the bus stops because our uh, people are not patient everybody wants to get on the buses at the same time and we we've been working with Lagos state government and they've provided security so we'll, you know we, we we may need some more to make sure that you know people don't rush buses and you know we keep that 20 
per, per, uh, per cost. So it's really managing uh, and controlling the crowd. Because remember, we use each bus used to pick up about 70 passengers for the two sitting and 20, uh, 28 standing. Yeah. Now we, we've gone to 20 sitting only. So we're using three buses to do what one bus used can, to do. do. So yeah. it's put pressure on, uh, on us and managing the crowd is just tough. And the other part of it is traffic. I don't know what happened in Lagos um, this past week. The traffic was just maddening. And when those bus don't come back on time, it also the crowd backlogs for you. And then it becomes a problem. All right. Thank you so much for your time this evening. We wanted to hear from your side because you have a big transport system. Thank you mm -hmm. for your time this evening. So. Mr. Ola Dayo. I'll be only Dayo. Just do Dayo. You are a <laughs> private business person. Mm. I just heard you nodding your head and saying it's crazy, it's crazy, it's crazy. Yes. Let's focus on survival right now as a business person. Yeah. What is your strategy for survival to say, okay, this business becomes profitable for you? If the government is asking you for 60% capacity, mm. how do you intend to survive? Uh, thank you very much, uh, well, thank you for having me on the show. Um, it's, it's really, a, it's become like a, what we used to stay in the startup ecosystem, a chicken and egg problem. Hmm. Which one do you put for first? So, um, the 60% capacity has now had to make us have people in each row sit 2-2 two -two hmm. against the standard Four. number that we'll carry. And the simplest answer I can give to that question is, on, everybody's involved in this. We are all affected. The commuters are affected, the businesses, the people rendering the service. You can hear from all the people that you've spoken with earlier. Everyone is affected. So I think we all have to, first of all, admit that to ourselves, that everyone is affected. Uh, people are losing jobs. You know, you can't yes. count that as well. So. I think what we're doing is to make sure that we fairly share the burden on everybody and communicating that in the most uh, human, um, humane Maybe way possible. possible and being, uh, how should I say, uh, empathetic to the situation and knowing that some people have lost their jobs, some people don't have as much uh, you know, money as they used to and also having them know that they still need to get to where they're going to earn a living. And on our own side, knowing that we still need to put these buses, because I think what is always paramount in our head is, if we're not operating, it's like the people that we're even protecting from this hazard out there, we are not going to be able to do that. Absolutely. So we see our work even more like frontline front workers. Line workers. Well, absolutely. Because we take more caution and precaution to sanitizing our buses, mm. making sure that the passengers use hand sanitizers, and even we tell our commuters that limit your charter mm -hmm. to a messaging service we have on the, on the bus. So there's a, in our application, we have a messaging service that everybody on the bus can talk to each other. Okay. So we encourage So you don't even that. need to talk. So you don't even need to talk to the person <laughs> next to you. Wow. So they get along mm -hmm. fine, you know, uh, online, virtually, mm -hmm. and that has worked. And I think we started, we caught on to this very early. Because I'm sort of the person that's like, how uh, we doomsday preppers. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, okay. So when you start seeing some signs, you know where it might go. So we started even doing all this distancing Social way before distancing. the lockdown, or way before people started stop going to work. Okay. So I think it was easy for us to ease into that. But with regards to your question, everybody has to understand that we are all going to share the burden. Mm -hmm. The company is going to share part of it. The commuters are going to share the part of it. The bus operators have to share part of it. And that's how we can really move forward. So what has been your biggest challenge um, post-lockdown? Uh, post uh, our biggest challenge, you know, when, since uh, the ease had been announced, apart from the fact that, okay, we now have to re-strategize how we're going to carry less people than we usually would, is the fact that I think the corporate world is still watching. Mm -hmm. Whether to go back to work yet. So, so your major clients. So our major clients are still 
trying to watch the environment. So even though we have a lot of people coming Boarding in and booking in and saying, oh, I want to ride, I want to ride, mm -hmm. they've not, you know, given like definite dates that they want to do it yet. So okay. we just encourage them to, okay, let us know when you're ready and, you know, we're always here. Hmm. Okay, so okay. someone, um, I think Ade from London, is, he's become our regular. <laughs> Evening, ladies, to control Lagos traffic, government have to play, um, go and apply the 1970-1980 introduction of even and odd numbers. numbers. Even numbers vehicle move on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, okay, yes. while odd numbers are allowed on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and he's saying thank you. I mean, condolences to my your brother. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So what do you see in terms of easing this problem? Because first of all, I feel that if we must effectively um, implement the social distancing, first of all, all these are our yellow buses. They have to go. Every bus that is not standardized right now, and that is going to cause a major security risk because a lot of them, you know, they are, they are, in, a, they are in huge numbers. So the Molue buses, the yellow buses, all of them have to be completely scrapped. Then we now have businesses like Mr. Fola's business and businesses like, like yours. yours. The government will now pump in, you know, more yeah. funds into those, those businesses to, to increase Standardize. your capacity and scale your business, yeah. to yeah. be able to move people from point A to point B. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what do you think would be a good strategy for the government to start looking at if we truly want to say, you know what, we have seen COVID has presented this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Let us take advantage and cash in and mm -hmm. quickly correct our already dysfunctional transport, transport system. system. Mm -hmm. Excellent question, uh, and thank you for asking that. <laughs> this problem and what the uh, person yeah. had said, it's something that, because I was born in that time, so I knew when cars were even and odd numbers. And numbers. So mm -hmm. I always talked about it as a solution for Lagos traffic, even yeah. before mm -hmm. we went into our business. And I think what you also said is right in terms of the government now putting all their efforts and all their capacity and power and the legislature, uh, legislature and the policies behind companies that would seem like the future. They're structured. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because we are set up as the future of public transportation, where it is organized, it is monitored, and it is coordinated, and it's you know, structured. easy and structured. So yes, the government will have to come and come mm -hmm. into this play. And I see more of companies like us coming up. Mm -hmm. And of course, what BRT is doing and the lag buses are doing in ways to get to this, uh, our, what you call it now, promised land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, particularly, I think this, this has been done before. Well, maybe a lot of people don't know or okay. we forgot. It. The way BRT came into place in the first place, was not just government dumping buses on the masses of the public or the operators at the time, which were mostly Molwares and everything. Yeah. Mm. They had to do it in partnership with them. Yeah. So I think it would be a situation where the we all sit down. We all sit down and say, you can still benefit from this. We're just going to change the way we're working. Mm. Mm. You will still have buses that you manage, and it will be done properly. So the money, the money you're earning and the money the drivers, the conductors are earning won't be choked or won't be cut out completely and everybody's mm -hmm. just thrown into, uh, what's it called, unfortunate situation. So it would have to be those kind of sit down and talks where there will be a partnership between the government, the private sector and the NURTW where we can now have more of this kind of, you know, uh, programs. I mean, if, if we... For instance, now, we have a program called Partner Bus Owners. So what you don't know is that we don't own our buses. Oh, no. OK. Because our main goal is to decongest this city or any city that staff bus operates in. Okay. So we're solving it from one side of people just uh, driving in uh, single occupancy vehicles, where there's just one person mm. driving to work, to put but putting us together and say, let's go in a bus. That was one solution we thought of. Another way to go about that is having what you call it now, um, uh, what was that, uh, in the public, uh, in terms of the public space, yeah. okay. have people bring their buses. Okay. Instead of us going to the market and buying more buses and even adding more congestion to, to the, the roads, road, yeah. it was existing buses, existing we just help buses. you put a structure. Exactly. So we have the platform, we have the structure, we have the experience 
for doing this for uh, logistics for a while. Okay. To put those buses that are not used to capacity and say, okay, mm -hmm. let's do this. You know, bring it into the partner post program that we have. So mm -hmm. we can have other people who are just having buses. And all these buses that we want to convert, the yellow buses and everyone, mm -hmm. everyone converts them into, you know, a nice, decent looking, safe bus, bus. and puts it under a staff bus uh, program and still continue earning money like, you know, okay. they would normally. Okay, since, awesome. say, say, for example, the government doesn't come in to do the needful, uh, do you have any plan in, um, in place to ensure that, because we know that COVID-19 is not going to go out in another anytime one soon. year yeah. or in any time soon, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, do you have any plans in place to ensure that you have uh, a structured um, uh, service. Service. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So it's the way we started this company. It wasn't just by fly. We had a lot of sit down, you know, over the years. And when we finally launched in 2018, I can tell you that we've been working on this for the three years before 2018, wow. just looking at what all the possible scenarios and are like. and look what like. can happen down the line. Mm. So. I think we have a good platform, we have a good structure, and it's been tested. Because we ran phase one of Star Wars. Mm -hmm. This is phase two of Star Wars in 2020. Okay. And we started in January again, mm -hmm. and started with just two routes. And by March, we had gone to 14. So there was a study group we were doing, by the time the lockdown came, we were already doing 21,000 trips. Wow. Mm -hmm. you know. So the system that we put in place works. We've seen it. Okay. So we, we, we can actually present this formula that's already winning, winning. to a larger scale so we can upscale whatever yes, it is whatever that we are, we, are doing we are doing. And make it mm -hmm. you know, more. Do you, more do you see that the government in Lagos State, do you see them willing to be open to those kinds of suggestions? Because you are a private company. Yeah. Folatinum is a private company. Mm -hmm. you know, but I'm sure you cannot run certain kinds of businesses in Lagos without the buying of the government. Mm. So do you see that willpower in the government to say, okay, we're ready to do this? Why I ask this question is because Gokada thought they were solving the problem. Exactly. And they came in and they did a lot of things, invested. In fact, yesterday I was, I was watching um, Bloomberg TV and they were talking about 50 million, mm. whatever that was invested, blah, blah, blah. All of those things, as far as I'm concerned, now is gone down the drain because of one simple policy mm. where they ban Okada. Okada. Jonathan, so mm -hmm. do you see that the government has that willpower to be able to say, you know what, let's do a private par public partnership, you know, with existing structures mm -hmm. like yours, mm -hmm. so we can move the transport system mm -hmm. forward? Okay. Thank you, Wat. It's good that you mentioned this example, because <laughs> <laughs> we always go through all these uh, things as they happen and see, you know, critically mm -hmm. look at what's happening there. One thing I will start with is, I see the government doing that. Okay sitting down with private sector, especially in the kind of governor, governor that we have, we is always forward thinking and trying to, Absolutely. you know, even... Resolve problems. Yeah, not be, what's it, reactive, but yeah. proactive. Proactive, yes. okay. So, yeah, I believe in such a governor that we have that, you know, he'll be able to sit down. I mean, even before he came into power, I think he went on top of the ecosystem in terms of technology awesome. companies and mm. trying to understand what everyone was doing. Was doing. So, yes, I believe he, we can do that. Also, don't forget that uh, the government has done pub, uh, public, uh, how do you call it? Public-private public partnership, private partnership yeah. before mm -hmm. in, La in sectors, Loma. Yeah. In Loma, mm -hmm. you know, and it worked. Mm. So it's not about whether it will work or not. It's the fact that let's sit down and, and, do this. and talk this through and see how it will work. I mean, we, would, we are not operating an illegal business. Mm. So... Uh, we are paying our taxes and everything is, we are law abiding. So mm. it shouldn't be anything that there would be a problem to also, sit down with. This. So, so I feel, I think that um, okay. the truth is, if we want to solve this transport problem, we really must sit down together and join our hands together. Yes. It's not one person and one party, no. Yeah. Exactly. Let's all put our heads together and solve this. We, call, exactly. we bring in last month, we bring police, we bring everybody, any RTW, mm -hmm. and we try to bring the problem. Exactly. And, and I mean, and th thrash it once and for all. Thank and you. like what you said, sorry mm -hmm. to cut you, what you said in the beginning, Yeah. the quote you yeah, said, the you quote. said alternative yes. public transport is the future. Yes. Yes. 
So this is alternative. Star Wars is alternative. Absolutely. All the things that can come ever are alternative. So yes, Absolutely. we believe we are the future of public Oh my goodness, it's so much fun when we're having fun and, and we ran out of time. All right, so <laughs> please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. And all our broadcast airs on Mondays, Saturdays, and Sundays at 3 p.m. It's been a very insightful conversation. And keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at Way Show Africa or at plus tv africa as we continue to hear what you are saying now in case you missed today's quote again our guest already helped us <laughs> if you provide good alternatives for public transport you won't have traffic problems oh, it's yeah. as simple as, as abc <laughs> now see you tomorrow at 8 p.m yeah. have a good evening <laughs>